Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about my Amazon puffer fish. A lot of people have been finding my Amazon puffer care guide and are asking me how the fish are getting on now. And I actually realised that I've had these guys for way over two years now. So I thought I would give you some of my experience, some of my tips and basically just how I've got on keeping these guys for the last two years. If you're looking for a full care guide for these guys, then I'll link the video below and you can watch that first before you have a little look at this. Now, the Amazon puffer fish is an amazing fish, but it's one of those fish that kind of comes along with quite a few issues. And it's these issues that tend to put people off and people seem to focus on these issues rather than sort of the benefits and the positives of the fish. So the one issue that people tend to focus on the most, I think, is glass surfing. So glass surfing from an Amazon puffer or from any fish is basically just the fish swimming up and down the glass. Now, I don't actually have any footage of my fish doing this because they stopped doing it after a couple of months. And I think the problem with this issue is because people know prior to getting Amazon puffers that they do this, they seem to just focus on this and overthink it. People are always asking me what I did to prevent mine from glass surfing and realistically all I did was just leave them alone. The advice that I was given was have a filter with a heavy flow, this will give them something to swim into, um, have the tank quite heavily planted and this will give them stuff to sort of swim around and adventure and sort of forage through. Now I definitely think the glass surfing is something that's basically a behavior that they display but it also probably is related to stress somewhat and a lot of the amazon puffers are wild caught and obviously they've went from swimming up and down in the amazon river to basically being stuck in a box as sad as that sounds so my advice for this is basically just allow the fish time to settle in let them calm down and get familiar with their new aquarium I see a lot of people talking about rescaping the tank, adding more flow, um, you know, trying to cover the tank up to stop them from seeing their own reflection. Basically just leave them alone, give them some time and they should be fine. Now, I do remember being quite frustrated when mines were glass surfing to begin with, but someone else told me the exact same thing I'm telling you now is just be patient and they'll be fine. If the glass surfing is going to bother you to that extent, I just probably wouldn't bother getting these guys. The only time I would be concerned about glass surfing is if they don't stop it to feed. If this is the case, then there might be something wrong and you want to establish what that is as quick as possible. So the next issue a lot of people want to hear about is of course their teeth. So this tends to be a big talking point when it comes to Amazon puffers, you know, how long does it take before you need to trim their teeth? Do their teeth grow really quickly? Do they not? Do you need snails? Do you not need snails? You know, all this kind of stuff. So what I've learned about their teeth in the two years that I've had them is that they do grow quite quickly, but each puffer is completely different. Now I have three Amazon puffers in my tank right now. Two have long teeth and one literally looks like it has no teeth. So in the two years that I've had them, I've actually only had to trim their teeth once and that was about six months ago. So about maybe 17, 18 months into owning them. Now, I'm not sure if that was because like maybe the ones I had were younger and as they were growing, you know, their body was getting bigger and obviously their teeth were kind of in proportion with their body. And it's actually when they're fully grown that their teeth start to overgrow. That was one of my ideas. Um, but what I learned from trimming their teeth was that actually once you trim them, they tend to seem to grow back a little bit quicker. Mine have always had the diet that they're supposed to have, crunchy foods, and what I do here is I tend to hold a frozen cube and you can really feel them sort of biting at it and gnawing at it, and I think that helps to trim down their teeth as well. Some of them will sort of naturally forage through stuff, bite wood, bite rocks, all these kind of things, and that'll trim their teeth down, and that's what I think one of my Amazon puffers do, but the other two definitely don't. So to conclusively answer the question, yes, you will inevitably have to trim your Amazon puffer's teeth, but it will depend on each individual puffer itself. If you want to see us trimming our Amazon puffer's teeth, I'll link the video down below. Now, it's not a how to trim the teeth, it's just a way that we decided to do and it seemed to work and we were happy with it. So other than all these issues, I've actually found these guys really, really easy to look after. They don't really require much other than obviously the teeth trimming, um, which I've done once in the two years and two months that I've had them. They're definitely hardy little fish. I've moved quite a few times and had to move my full setup and set it back up again and they've been through this quite a few times. Another thing I've found keeping these Amazon puffers is that they do actually nip other fish. 
by nipping, I mean like just taking a little tiny bit out of someone's fins. Now, they've done this to my Plek, they've done it to Cody's, they've done it to my Geophagus as well, but it's not anything that's caused any real long-lasting damage, and to be fair, they don't really do it that much anymore. I wouldn't say it's a major issue in any way, but I would be aware of it and I wouldn't really keep them with any fish with long flowing fins. They do also tend to do it to slow moving fish, so like Plex or Cory's or anything that just kind of sits there, they can be quite a target for them as well. Now, the majority of Amazon puffers are wild caught, if not all of them, and this means that obviously they can come with parasites or diseases, so it is recommended that you do treat them before you put them into your tank and you quarantine them. I did this, and since then, I've never had to really treat them for anything else again. They seem to be really healthy, they've never had white spot, and there's no real signs of any parasites. So I've really enjoyed keeping these guys over the last couple of years. The issues that are highlighted in this video haven't really been major issues for me at all. These guys are super playful, they're really intelligent and they're really fun to feed. So let me know if you're going to purchase any Amazon puffers or if you've just recently purchased them and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, please like this video and I will see you in the next one.